Hello. I am here to do a giant summer reading wrap up. Let's just get started. So I read 21 books over the summer, which isn't very much considering all the time that it was. Um, but I want to just kind of quickly go over what I read. Um, and for me, summer is basically every, everything I read from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Um, yeah, so a challenge I'm doing for myself, and I have a timer set, is that I'm gonna try and only talk about each book for a minute or just a little over a minute um, because I really don't want this to be any longer than like 25 minutes so I'm just gonna get started and just just be flying these just at you okay okay here we go okay so the first book I read this summer was Women Running in the Mountains by Yuko Tsushima um, this book was actually written in I believe the 80s and it's set in 1970s Japan and it follows a young single woman who gets pregnant out of wedlock um, and decides to have and keep the baby and what that means for her and society and how society treats her at that time. She lives in a very abusive home. Her father physically abuses her, emotionally abuses her, um, but she really dreams about this place in the mountains where she can be free with her child and she's from a very working class family um, and one thing I really liked about this book was how the narrator spent time to really just look at life around her and find beauty in the everyday and I just thought it was written so beautifully um, and New York Times uh, excuse me uh, the New York Review of Books just republished this with a intro by Lauren Groff. So highly, highly recommend Women Running in the Mountains. I gave it four out of five stars. Okay, the next book I read in the spirit of women in the title and mountains and wilderness, um, I read the word for woman is wilderness. Um, I talked about it a little bit on this vlog. Um, I read it while I was backpacking in the Olympics over Memorial Day weekend. Um, and this is sort of like a retelling of into the wild but from a feminist perspective it follows a young girl who's 18 who essentially leaves England to go live alone in a cabin in Alaska but she decides that she wants to get there in a very unconventional manner so she first takes a boat uh, to Iceland and then spends some time in Iceland but then takes a boat to Greenland I think it's like a whale research boat and it's really just her figuring out what it's like to be a woman traveling alone um it was okay I believe it just was missing something for me um, and I'll get to a book later that I read this summer that I felt like encapsulated the woman alone in the wilderness feeling that I was really looking for but it was still a good read so check it out if you want to. Okay the third book I read this summer was You Never Get It Back by Kara Blue Adams and I read this book because it is blurbed by Brandon Taylor and was recommended to him or recommended by him on his Instagram, I think I saw him promoting it. And this is a book of kind of interconnected stories. Um, I can't remember, I read it while I had COVID, so I don't really remember a time, but I remember it's a lot about college, post-college, um, those very particular years in your 20s when you're figuring things out. Um, it also reminded me a little bit of Writers and Lovers. Essentially, it's someone's sort of wanting to be a writer, but figuring all this out, working menial jobs, that sort of thing. Um, I remember thinking they were compelling and that the writing was really beautiful. Um, it didn't blow me away, but I definitely think that this collection is worth a read if you're interested in sort of a coming of age, someone discovering their love for writing, that sort of thing. Okay, and then the next book I read uh, this summer was Housekeeping by Marilyn Robinson. I personally can't believe that I just read this for the first time in 2022. Um, Marilyn Robinson is one of my favorite authors. Um, I have read Gilead and Leela. Um, I love both those books and Housekeeping is her first novel um, and it's set in the post-war America in the West, so Spokane, Idaho, close to where I live actually. 
um, and it follows these two young girls who have centrally been orphaned and they end up being raised by their kind of wayward traveling train hopping aunt um, in this big old house uh, near Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So um, it was just a masterpiece. One of the best books I've read this year. I can't give it justice talking about it in a minute, but that's what I've told myself. That is my rule. So <laughs> I won't say more, but I gave it five out of five. And if you love language and beauty and truth and all the things that matter in this world, read this book. The next book I read was Girlhood by Melissa Fabos. Um, I actually think I might have read this before Housekeeping because I definitely also read this when I was stuck alone for 14 days with COVID. Um, Melissa Fabos um, is a really interesting person. Um, she used to be a dominatrix. Um, she's just a really incredible feminist writer. And this book is really about her grappling with going from girlhood to womanhood and the trauma that that plays on women, particularly because of the patriarchy. Um, and I could go more into this, but it just is like, felt like, this book felt like therapy. <laughs> um, it was just a lot. Um, I will say all the trigger warnings for all sorts of things, um, but it is a very important book, I think. And it really did like stick with me and I do really recommend her work. I really wanna read, um, I think it's Body Work. Is that what it's called? I wanna read that next. So this was Girlhood. Okay, then I picked up Hot Milk by Deborah Levy. Um, I specifically, or Deborah Levy, sorry. I specifically chose this because I wanted something set in a warm, hot place. Um, our June was really slow to getting warm and it took us just forever to get a hot sunny day. So I really found escapism in this book. Um, this book is about a uh, a girl in her 20s trying to figure out what she's gonna do with her life while she's living in Spain, helping her mother see this specialist doctor because her mother has this, all these mysterious illnesses that just become more mysterious as the book goes on. Um, I loved the writing, I loved the setting, it was just a romp and I definitely recommend this book. And I'm really looking forward to reading more by her. Um, this is the only fiction I have read by Deborah Levy before, so um, excited to read more of her stuff. Okay, then I read In the Distance by Hernan Diaz, um, and this was recommended to me um, because I asked people what I should read when I was doing the John Muir Trail, even though I was only on the trail for not very long because of all sorts of things. Um, but this is a story of a young Swedish immigrant who comes to America with his brother, but they get lost on the journey and he just starts this long trek where he wants to go from San Francisco to New York in about the mid 1800s. And it's just so interesting because he's going against the flow of the pioneers, you know, going out West and he's just this solitary behemoth of a character. Um, it's a very solitary book because a lot of the times he's alone in his thoughts um, and it just was beautifully written and so different from anything I've read and I really want to read more by Hernan Diaz. I really want to read Trust. Um, I've also heard good things so very very much recommend In the Distance. And then I read uh, Indelicacy by Amina Kane. Uh, this book was just chef's kiss. Uh, the most wonderful, thinky, delectable, just language. It was just so great to read. I picked this copy up at Pals um, when I was in Portland in July, and I think I read it in less than a day. Um, it was just uh, a book about a woman who works as a cleaner in a museum. She gets out by of that life by marrying a very rich man. Then she realizes all she wants to do is make art, all she wants to do is write. Um, and it's really about her claiming that within herself. Um, and it was just a beautiful, beautiful book. I love that you had no idea when it was set. It just was kind of amorphous in time. It could have been set in modern times. It could have been set back in 1900 and you have no idea where it's set. And it's just, 
a beautiful, beautiful novel, and I really, really recommend it. Okay, um, and then I read Cult Classic by Sloane Crossley, and I hated it. I thought the whole premise was dumb. <laughs> it's basically where it's like a ghost of ex-boyfriend's past. It kind of just reminded me of High Fidelity a little bit. Um, mixed with like weird algorithm surveillance happening at the same time and like culty tech stuff and it was just too much at once and i just really didn't care it was also so straight like the way that she was like dealing with everything i was like girl just loosen loosen up these parameters you've set for yourself it was just so like like that couldn't buy the drama because I was like, why is this a big deal? Why is any of this a big deal? I just, <sighs> book was a waste of my time and I'm really upset that I read it. So that's my very cutting review of that. It's very rare I read a book I don't like, but really didn't like that one. And I read The Beauty of the Husband by Anne Carson. I have, I bought it. I have a copy of it. I just have no idea where it is. So that's a whole thing. Um, yeah, so this is sort of um, Anne Carson's kind of, as we know, poetry prose. And it's about her exploring this kind of long relationship um, and how it's kind of coming apart. To be perfectly honest, I didn't get the strongest feelings about this, I think I was mostly just confused. I think Anne Carson does a lot of referencing, particularly of classical texts that I just don't have a lot of background knowledge in, so sometimes it makes her work hard to understand. However, I am really intrigued by her writing and use of language, and I definitely still want to check out Autobiography of Red, which I have, and other works. So this was my first Anne Carson, and it did to be honest, go over my head quite a bit. Okay, and then I read a beautiful, beautiful book, Cold Enough for Snow by Jessica Au. As we know, everyone and their mom on booktube has been reading this, but for good reason. It is just absolutely lovely. Um, it's just a small little novel about a mother and daughter who are traveling to Japan. Um, and I believe that they are it was unclear whether they were Korean or where they were from originally. Um, again, read this in July, don't have the copy with me, but um, it was just this beautiful story of their relationship and this time while they're traveling. And it also uses um, flashbacks quite a bit in the narrative, but it was really well done and just explores that kind of growing up and relationship with your mother. and. It was also just the descriptions of Japan in autumn was just beyond gorgeous. I, I really, really love this book and would definitely read it again. And I really want to get a copy because it was just so lovely. Okay. Uh, then I read The Idiot by Alif Batuman. Oh my God, this book was so good. Um, if you haven't heard of this book yet, if you're here, I'd be shocked if you haven't heard of it yet, but it's okay if you haven't. Um, this follows uh, Celine, who is a young 18-year-old uh, going to Harvard in the 90s. And it basically follows her whole first year of college through the summer. And she is Turkish-American, and this book focuses so much on, like, humor of things being lost in translation, miscommunication, realizing when you're young, there's so much you just don't understand and don't know. And it was just so 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 well written i laughed out loud so much it's very rare that a book really genuinely makes me laugh this and the characters are just amazing and i'm so excited to read either or this was a five out of five i can't believe i hadn't really read it yet i read it like two years ago and then i only got halfway through because i had to give the copy back and i just can't believe i didn't pick it up before then because it was just so so good uh, then I read A Ghost in the Throat by a wonderful Irish author who I should be taking the time to know how to pronounce their name. Um, and this follows um, a woman who, it's unclear to me actually whether this was nonfiction, fiction, whether it's the author talking about their own experience, but 
Um, this basically follows um, an Irish woman's poem about lamenting over the death of her husband. And just to say the poem is from the 18th century and she kind of goes through this poem and explores the themes um, and it's just absolutely gorgeous and the whole point of a ghost in the throat is supposed to be how as women we are kind of bound to each other throughout history and the past and the present and the future from the things we've experienced in our grief and it was just again so well written i read a lot of good books in a row and it was just so so great this was definitely one of them please please pick it up then i read all down darkness wide by sean hewitt um, and although this wasn't uh, set in Ireland at any time, um, he does um, quote an Irish poet quite a bit in this book. So I feel like I was on an Irish kick for quite a, quite a bit. But um, this book is a memoir uh, that sh where Sean Hewitt writes about his experience where his partner is suicidal and deeply depressed for many years while they are together. Um, and it explores the harsh realities of queerness, um, of this grief, of feeling ostracized by society where your identity for so long has been locked up in the dark and what that can do to your psyche over time. Um, so it's definitely a tough book, but I think a necessary book and it wasn't cliche. Um, and I really like how he focused on a d lot of different uh, queer poets. I did a reading vlog where I talked more about this book. So if you want to know more, you can check that out. Okay, then I read Abigail, which I also talked about in said reading vlog, um, by Magda Sosbo. Uh, and she's a Hungarian writer. And this was written, I think, in the 70s. Um, and it's since been translated into English. The edition I read was translated by Len Ricks. Um, and this is just the loveliest little plotty book I have read in so long. It was just five out of five for me. It follows a young girl in World War II who gets sent away to this boarding school because her father's in the Hungarian resistance against Hitler. And it's just about her experience being at this very strict religious boarding school and the friends she makes and just all the sort of boarding school antics that go on. I just absolutely loved, loved this book. I recommended it to my mom because, and then she went and read it and loved it. So I just think it's uh, just all around one of those books. It's like good plot, good writing so rare to find um and i was so glad to read this too just to also celebrate women in translation month which was august okay then i read um small things like these by claire keegan a tiny tiny spit of a book and um it was a no i just i don't understand why this book was nominated for a booker and I think it just got shortlisted today, and I'm just really shocked by that. It does have a compelling subject. It talks about the Magdalene laundries that were happening in Ireland in um, the 70s, 80s. I don't know how long they've been going on, but this was in the 80s that this was happening particularly. And um, it just was too short. It wasted time since the book didn't was too short and it just to me it was also told by a man it just was a no so yeah unfortunately it was not for me I would rather read something a little bit more in depth about this topic and maybe from a different perspective all right then I read Permafrost by Ava Balthazar and as we know chef's kiss she is now one of uh, one of those writers I'm super intrigued by, want to know more. I just got a copy of Boulder, her newest work that came out, and this just follows a young woman, a queer woman, who is trying to figure out who she is, what she's doing, how she deals with her deep depression and suicidal tendencies, and survive in this world. And it was just some of the best writing I've read in a while. She's a poet first, so of course it makes it like just so much more beautiful because of that background that she has and the language was just delectable and I just loved this book. Um, I mean, lots of trigger warnings, I guess, if suicide is something that you're weary of, um, but it's rare that you read a book with that theme that is also just so funny at the same time. So it was so good. 
So the next book I read was River by Esther Kinski. And I picked this book up because I saw the spine of it on the shelf in the library and it looked like a Fitzcarraldo edition, which this is not, but little did I know that Esther Kinski's River or maybe Grove, their other book, um, is a Fitzcarraldo edition. <laughs> so this book was translated from German by Ian Galbraith. Um, and this is essentially a woman who moves to London and just spends this whole book ruminating on rivers, um, particularly the River Thames in London and um, also a creek in Palestine, um, I believe um, a river in Canada. She spends a chapter on that. Um, and I really loved this book and I want to read more by her. Um, I think this one was a little slow for me um, and pretty thick, um, over 300 pages, and it's kind of a lot for the context of what this is. But um, I do need to note that this was blurbed by Claire Louise Bennett. And I kind of started this thing where I was reading, I realized I was reading a lot of books that were, had been recommended by Claire Louise Bennett. Because on that note, Indelicacy um, also is, I know, has been blurbed by Claire Louise Bennett as well. So we love her. All right, so the book I read after River was The Wall by Marlene Haushofer. And this is an Aust Austrian writer. Um, and it was translated, let's see, who is this translated by? Uh, Sean Whiteside. Um, this is the recent um, New Directions republication of this classic work. Um, and thank you so much, New Directions, for sending me this copy. Um, they were very gracious in gifting it to me. Um, so this book is about a woman who is vacationing at a hunting lodge uh, in the Austrian mountains and um, she awakens to basically find that a giant wall has been erected around her. It's invisible and that she's stuck and alone and she's essentially in the wilderness with a dog, a cat, and a cow. And it's her learning how to survive and also ruminating on her past and who she is now. And this was the book that I was talking about earlier of what I really was looking for, kind of of a woman alone in the wilderness um, that the word for woman is wilderness didn't really give me, but this really did. And it was just some of the best writing Ever, this is a classic this is like especially if you like thinky internal woman monologue narratives this is it right here and I have spent more than a minute talking about this because that's how much I loved it it was yeah and it has an afterword by Claire Louise Bennett um, and yeah on that note after I read The Wall and the last book that I will leave you all with, um, I read Check Out 19 by Claire Louise Bennett. Um, oh, actually, this is not the last book. Just kidding. There's another one in there. I'm going to sneak it in. Um, <laughs> yeah, I read Check Out 19 um, by Claire Louise Bennett at the end of August. And this is just almost like a book about books. It's very meta. Um, if you've read Pond or know of Claire Louise Bennett and how she writes, um, it's very out there, but in the best way, um, was just such a delight to read. Um, it's really about, it seems sort of autobi uh, semi-autobiographical, but of a young woman discovering who she is as a writer and how she finds the company of books throughout her life. And one thing I loved about this book was how she really reflected on where she was when she read certain things and I think that that's so important and sometimes gets looked past um, as readers um, that the act of reading and where we read and how we read can be you know just as important as writing or some other creative task. I don't know I just feel like this book if you love to read you should read this book because it just kind of fills your soul to the brim with all of that and then it's also it's just fun weirdness that Claire Louise Bennett brings us it was 100% a five out of five okay this is truly the last book that I read this summer 
um, and that is Milkman by Anna Burns. The reason why I wasn't thinking of it is because I listened to this on audio. Um, so Milkman is a story about a young woman, she's 18, 19, living in Belfast during the Troubles at the end of the 1970s. Um, and it's very internal. It's about her and living in this community where it's very oppressive, claustrophobic, everybody knows each other, everybody knows each other's business. And the essential kind of beginning of the plot is that um, there's been a rumor started that she is dating the milkman who is this paramilitary um, IRA person um, who's a lot older than her and married and the thing is she is not dating the milkman the milkman is really just stalking her um, there's so much more to say about this book um, it's honestly unlike anything I've ever read um, and the reason I listen to it is because it is written in this very stream of consciousness type dialect that is very unique, I feel like, to Northern Ireland. And when I heard it being read out loud, I feel like everything clicked and it all just made so much more sense to me. Um, and it was funny, it was heartbreaking, it was just perfect. This book was perfect, I loved it so much. I would like to try reading it again now that I feel like I kind of got the rhythm of the inflection of the speech. And in a weird way, I feel like sometimes Claire Louise Bennett writes similarly, even though she's from like west of London. She's lived in Ireland for 20 years, Southern Ireland. Um, but there's just something similar, I feel like, in the way these two write. Just something about the rhythm when you're reading it. And it was a really fun challenge. Um, and yeah, this won the Booker, I think, back in maybe 2017. Well deserved. Again, I'm over a minute on this one, but it was just so good. It was just so good. Um, yeah, so let me gather all the print books I have around me. Okay, so here is, is this the shot? The thumbnail shot? Um, anyway, <laughs> here's... I read more than this, but I think this is all the print books I have of everything I read this summer, but here they are. It was a lovely summer of reading. I am ready for fall to not constantly be so hot in my apartment with no AC and all that, but then I will be sad as we do lose access to the sunlight up here in the Northwest. It gets pretty dreary, but ready to co cozy in and just get started. I have a fun, vlog I'm working on of a tag. Yes, you heard that right. I am attempting to make a tag. So we're going to see if this either is cool or it totally flops. We're going to find out, but more to come with that. I hope you enjoyed this summer reading wrap up. Um, I prefer doing it this way than doing it every month. And I kind of like challenging myself to only give myself a minute um, because I feel like vlogs that style allows me for more time to really maybe ruminate. It's hard for me to just sit here and talk about book after book after book. It just feels a little bit like a chore. So um, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this and let's hope this is under 30 minutes. Okay, bye y'all.